Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter with a question. What's in a name? We've all been watching and reading about the war in Ukraine, and you may have noticed correspondents pronouncing its capital city, Kiev, 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 all sorts of different ways. You may have also noticed that the spelling has changed from K-I-E-V to K-Y-I-V. This isn't just limited to the capital. There's also Kharkiv, Charkiv, Kharkiv to the east, and this city to the west. In the capital, Kiev, as Ukrainian forces have re-entered areas close to the capital, Kiev. Good morning, George. We've just returned from the town of Irpin. Well, we start tonight with a special report from the city of Kharkiv. As Russian troops withdraw from areas around the capital of Kiev. Given that there's been so much variation in the pronunciation of these places, which have been on the news so much recently, you're probably wondering how to say them properly. To help answer that question, I recently had Irena Halupa on the Fox Nomad podcast. Irena is a journalist specializing in broadcasting from northeastern Poland, who spent 23 years working for Radio Free Europe in Germany, Ukraine, and the Czech Republic as the director of the Ukrainian service. She has also worked for the Atlantic Council think tank and was a Fulbright scholar in Ukraine during 2016 to 2017. We not only talk about the semantics of that city name, Kyiv, but also why that pronunciation is important and why incorrect terms like the Ukraine are political in nature rather than linguistic errors. All right. Thank you, Irena, for joining me on today's episode. Um, I wanted to talk to you about something which may seem inconsequential considering that there is a war going on. But it's about the semantics. Um, because as I hear on the news, I've heard, for example, the word Kiev, pronounced Kiev, and Kiev. And I, I at first I thought maybe the journalists who are reporting on this are getting it incorrect. You know, the, the pronunciation mm -hmm. is incorrect. But I've, I've come to learn that that's not the case. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about why the pronunciation is different. How do we pronounce that city and why the spelling of it <laughs> has also changed now for a lot of English speakers from K-I-E-V to K-Y-I-V. Right. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Anil. Um, the practically everyone mispronounces the Ukrainian capital. And I find that really quite shocking because these are big multimedia companies, NPR, CNN. It's very easy to sort of Google things, uh, find pronunciation guides online. And there are plenty of people who are Ukrainians um, who live in America who would be more than happy to help with the pronunciation to sort of understand why the spelling has changed and why Ukrainians are uh, sensitive about how the how their capital is pronounced, you need a little bit of history. Ukraine has basically been enslaved by Russia for many, 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 many years, for centuries, actually. Eastern Ukraine was part of the Tsarist Russian Empire for over 300 years. Uh, the Russian system, whether it was imperial or Soviet, uh, went out of their way to annihilate Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian language, and so forth and so on. The spelling that we've been used to in the West, Kiev, is the Russian way of pronouncing the, the name of Ukraine's capital. And just a little bit of sort of potted and quick history, uh, the name Kiev comes from history. Uh, historically, we have been taught that the city was founded by three brothers and a sister, Kay, Shchek, and Khoriv, and their sister's name was Libit. And the city that they founded, that, that the eldest brother, whose name was Kay, founded was named Kiev in honor of his name. Now, Kiev is the Russian way of pronouncing the uh, name of the city. It's the Russian, it's the Russian word for for uh, Kyiv. After Ukrainian independence, Ukrainians all over the world started paying a little bit more attention to how their names were being pronounced and how they were being spelled. So there was a concerted effort to stop using uh, the article the 
uh, you may recall there was a time when people said the Ukraine. Well, the Ukraine is wrong, always has been. And thankfully, that is something that people have abandoned. And uh, everyone now says Ukraine because the Ukraine kind of relegates it to some sort of small little region. It's, it's an outpost of something and it's not a proper country. It's not a separate uh, entity in and of its own right. In Ukrainian, the capital is pronounced Kyiv. It's two syllables and most of the newscasters, moderators, um, presenters, anchors mispronounce it. They say Kiev. NPR, I, I sent them a really irate letter because they all say Kiev. It's not. It, it is two syllables. Kiev. The first A sound is like in the word big. And uh, the ending, sort of like yield, the same sound except with a V at the end. Kiev. Some people use a kind of a drier way of saying it. Kiev, which I think is not very nice sounding. So uh, Kyiv, it's it's quite easy, Kyiv. So NPR, listen up, get it right. And there's also this city in the West, which uh, I will mispronounce, uh, Lviv, Lviv, which is, yes. Uh -huh. And is it yes. the same situation there where? That's a little bit of a tougher one because um, in Ukrainian, we have something called the soft sound. It's a little letter that looks like the number six. And if you put that letter after a consonant, it softens the consonant. So an N will be a Ñ, like, uh, like the Spanish with the tilde, you know, in manana. Uh, an L will become a L, an S will become a Ş. And this is how Lviv is spelled. It's L and then the soft sound and V-I-V. -V. So the closest that I can think of uh, is... Lviv. So it's kind of, you almost have to put in some sort of a vowel in between Lviv. Uh, but the proper way is just a L, like a, I call them a wet L's, you know, so it's a wet L and Viv. And um, it's like, like Viv, you know, Viva la France or something like that. I mean, I think if people just practice a little bit and concentrate, it'll be easier. What really gets, gets my goat, well, everything gets my goat sometimes, but, um, Accents, for example, another city that has been in the news is a city called Kharkiv, which is in eastern Ukraine. It's 30 kilometers from the Russian Russian border, and it's been battered by by the Russian army considerably. And everyone says Kharkiv, Kharkiv, and that's just wrong. It's Kharkiv. The accent is on the first syllable. To play devil's advocate, so let's say Germany in English is Germany, in German it's Deutschland. And there are many countries, obviously, and when you change it to English, you know, there's a different right. version. How is this different? Um, how is it different? For example, let's say if Kiev is the, the quote unquote English way or the Russian mm -hmm. way that's been anglified, how is that different? And, and uh, you know, why is that important? Well, I think it's important because the country has a right to ask the world to pronounce its name and its cities a certain way. Uh, we used to call Burma, Burma until it became Myanmar. Uh, everybody used to say Peking until it became Beijing. So I fully believe that it's the country's right to have a say in how its names, uh, how the names of their cities and how the name of the country is pronounced. Uh, it's as simple as that. And is there a Do you, good... Don't you think that's reasonable? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, Turkey is going through this in their tourism right now, where they're mm -hmm. trying to change it to the Turkish way to say Turkey, which is Turkey, um, mm -hmm. which I, I don't know if it will stick because, but who knows? It, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Well, it, it's when you, th when you think back about where these names and pronunciations began, what were they driven by? A lot of times... These were issues of empire, issues of control. And, um, and so I fully support people's um, countries' right to have a say in how they are perceived um, in their names. I think, um, I think it's, uh, I think it's right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about Turkey. Um, you know, Turkey is a free country. Nobody is is persecuting Turkey. Turkey has Turkey determines how what Turkey is and how it should be perceived and viewed by by people. Is it important for it to be to, to you know in, in Germans Turkai? How is it in Turkish? Tur uh, Turkey. 
Turkey, Turkey, yeah, Turkey. Well, I can tell you, Americans are going to have a really hard time without you, with the, you know, with the umlauts. <laughs> so yeah. there's going to be a lot of linguistic butchery about. <laughs> and when you look at the history, it's about, it's literally about the bird. So it's kind of an interesting history. There are a couple of countries in the world that when you change their name, it means Turkey. And it's all because mm -hmm. of the, the actual bird. So, yeah, um, which yeah. is less, um, obviously less important politically uh, than, than it is in, in, in Ukraine's situation. Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are some good resources? Where can people find out how to pronounce these names? You know, a lot of it is just as simple as doing a Google search. I have seen a couple of videos where linguists have done little presentations, how to pronounce Kyiv and various other things. Um, if that uh, fails, you know, type in, if you're somewhere, type, just type in Ukrainian organizations in the area and, um, and you'll find somebody and uh, you can reach out to them and they will help you. Uh, I think that that's probably the easiest. I don't know of any uh, complete guide um, to pronunciation. Um, I have to say that certain things have changed and become um, a little bit easier. For example, uh, when Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, you and your listeners probably know that the communists had a penchant for naming cities after their big dealers, you know, big communists. So there was Dzerzhinsky, who was the founder of the secret police, Felix Dzerzhinsky. He had several cities named after him. Uh, Dzerzhinsky, that's already a mouthful, right? Um, we had a city in Ukraine called Dnipro Dzerzhinsk. Ain't nobody in their right mind able to pronounce that except the native. So that was, thankfully, they changed the name to that, uh, of that city. Um, so... Yeah, there's still a, an awful lot of work to do. Ukraine, uh, is, since the Russians first invaded Ukraine in, in 2014 and took Crimea and occupied swathes of territory in the east, Ukraine underwent this, um, not it's not a completed process, but they have been decommunizing. So they've been changing names of their cities from communist names to something that has more of a historic connection to, to the area, to the people, um, using uh, historic figures, for example, to, um, to, to name cities. I don't, I'm not sure if any of the motivation for changing these names is driven by making it easier for foreigners to pronounce, unlikely, but um, it's more of a, a kind of a writing a historic wrong uh, situation. But I think, um, I, th yeah, I think people have a right to determine uh, what they want their cities and towns to be called. And uh, is this a debate about the pronunciations, I guess, debate in the, in the, English media, I'll say, is that something that is being highlighted now because of the war? Or is this something that has been kind of going on in the Ukrainian community, trying to bring awareness to these names and semantics, um, but it's just gotten more recognition now? Or is it something that's a new uh, a sort of topic? Well, by virtue of the war, all Ukrainian names are in um in in the center of of people's attention uh, the ukrainian diaspora the ukrainian emigrate community has been very very vocal and um and quite active about having the removed and uh, having the capital spelled the ukrainian way um, but i would generally say that the western media has a difficulty with certain foreign names um whether it's names of cities, um, surnames, there is just a difficulty. They butcher Russian names as well. Um, there are a lot of sports people who are quite, um, quite big, like uh, Sharapova, for example. They pronounce her as Sharapova. And, um, and I just don't think that it's so difficult to find either a native speaker or someone who, is, who speaks Russian fluently um, to to say these things properly, uh, let's, and the Ukrainian as well, for example, you know, Volodymyr, the name of the Ukrainian president, his first name is Volodymyr. The Russian variant of that name is Vladimir. I've heard them, I've heard people say on, you know, <laughs> um, high profile, big media companies, uh, call him Vladimir, which I'm sure that he would not be particularly happy about at this point. So it's just, 
Do you know how many times people say, call me Irina, which is the Russian way of pronouncing my name, even though I deal with them, they see how I spell it and um, they never do it, um, do it properly. I think it's just a certain amount of um, English speaking laziness. Um, if it ain't John, it's complicated for them. So it's a um, way to try to, to try to learn these names. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that uh, they need to pay a little bit more attention to it. The producers have to stop being so lazy and, and do a little bit of legwork and get it right. But I think clearly every time there's a conflict, these kinds of issues become maybe a little bit more pronounced. Uh, I mean, obviously pronunciation takes second place to, uh, to the war. I mean, we want the war to stop and people, uh, we want the Russians to stop killing Ukrainians and get the hell out of the country. And then we'll worry about pronunciation. But, uh, you know, sometimes the two go step in step. Thank you very much, Irena, for being a guest on the Fox Nomad podcast. We talked not only about Ukraine, but also about her work at Stop Fake, which is a fact-checking organization. It's a very interesting conversation that you'll learn a lot from. So I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.